Okay, so today we're going to learn how to use the first derivative to tell us where functions are increasing and decreasing. And then from that information, we'll be able to figure out where functions have relative maximums and relative minimums. Well, the key concept to remember is that the derivative tells us the slope values of the original function. So think about it. If all the slope values are positive, that means your original function is going to have to be increasing. If all your slope values are negative, then that means the function is decreasing. And if your slope is 0, well, that means it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's constant. OK? So we're going to look and see where the derivative f prime of x is positive, where it's negative, and where it's equal to 0. Let's do this example. I've got this function f of x is x plus 2 squared times x minus 1. We're going to find the critical numbers and then use those to determine the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. OK, so to find the derivative of f, I'm going to have to use the product rule. And within the product rule, I'm doing the chain rule. So that's 2 times x plus 2 to the first times the derivative of x plus 2, which is 1, times the second term plus the first term times the derivative of the second term. Well, x minus 1's derivative is 1. All right, so you notice um, that I've got an x plus 2 to the first in that term, and I've got an x plus 2 squared in that term. So I can factor an x plus 2 out of both terms. Okay, that's going to leave me with a 2 times x minus 1. So I'll go ahead and write 2x minus 2. And then I have 1 x plus 2 left over here. All right, let's combine similar terms. And I've got 2x plus x, which is 3x. And negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So to find the critical numbers, remember we take our derivative and we set it equal to 0. And in this case, we have two critical numbers, x equals negative 2 and x equals 0. So what do we do with those? We're going to use those to make a sign chart. OK, so these are x values that we're going to plug into our derivative. And I know that the derivative is 0 at x equal negative 2 and at 0 at x equals 0. So I'd like to know where is the derivative positive, where is it negative, and I already know where it's 0 at those two places right there. Let's pick a point, any x value to the left of negative 2, say negative 3. Let's put them into our derivative. So if I put a negative 3 into x plus 2, I'm going to get a negative factor. If I put a negative 3 into 3x, that's also going to be a negative factor. And a negative times a negative is positive. Now pick a point, any point between negative 2 and 0. OK, how about negative 1? Well, if I put in negative 1 into x plus 2, that factor is positive. I put in negative 1 into 3x, that factor is negative. A positive times a negative is negative. And then finally, pick a point that's greater than 0, any point, say 1. 1 plus 2 is positive. 3 times 1 is also positive and a positive times a positive is positive. And I like to go ahead and draw little arrows that tell me what direction my function's going in. So if the function is increasing, I'm going to put an arrow like that. Here the derivative is negative, which means the function is decreasing between negative 2 and 0. And once we get past 0, the function is increasing again. So the intervals on which the function is increasing are negative infinity to negative 2. And I'll leave an open bracket because it's neither increasing nor decreasing there. And it's also increasing from 0 to infinity. It's decreasing between negative 2 and 0. 
Okay, so what's the first derivative test? Well, that simply says that if the derivative changes from negative to positive at some point c, some x value c, then f has a relative minimum at c, f of c. Let's think about what that's saying. Okay, so here's some x value c, and we do a sign chart for f of x, and we're saying that, okay, over here it's negative, and it's zero there, and then it's positive. So what's the function doing? It's decreasing, it's zero, and then it's increasing. Well, if the function is decreasing and then increasing, that means it must be doing something like that, which means that you've got yourself a relative min at x equals c. Okay, so what happens if it's changing from positive to negative at x equals c? Once again, if I did a little sign chart real quick, and at c, it's zero, this time it's positive to the left, and negative to the right, then now it's going up and then down, so the function's doing something like this, which means that we've got a relative max at x equals c. Okay, and then finally, If it doesn't change sign, what's going to happen? Okay, so I've got, um, let's say that f prime of x is 0 here at c, and let's say it's positive there and positive there. So that means it's increasing and increasing, but it's 0 right there. So what would that look like? Well, that might be a situation like this, where it's increasing and then you get a little plateau, and then it increases again. Okay, so you don't have either a relative max or a relative min. So, let's do this, this example here. Let's use the first derivative test to determine any relative extrema of the function, and the function is f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x. The first thing we want to do is get the critical point, so that means we have to take the derivative. So f prime of x, 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Set it equal to 0, which means I can divide everything by 6. And factor. So it looks like I have two critical points. One of them is at negative 2, and the other one is at 1. Let's do a sign chart for f prime. f prime of x at negative 2 is 0, and f prime of x at 1 is 0. Pick a point to the left of negative 2, okay, negative 3. So that factor becomes negative, and that one is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Pick a point between negative 2 and 1, say 0. That's a positive factor now. That's a negative. A positive times a negative is negative. And finally, pick a number greater than 1, positive, positive, multiply them together, and you get a positive. So our function is doing this, that, and that, increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, decreasing from negative 2 to 1, and increasing again to infinity. All right, so we have a relative max, pretty clearly, at negative 2. And we have a relative min at x equal 1. Let's go ahead and get those y values. And this is very important. Put these x values into the original function. Okay? So f of negative 2 is going to be 2 times negative 8 plus 3 times 4 plus 24 and we're going to get out negative 16 plus 12 plus 24 I believe that's 20 so there's our maximum or relative maximum rather and finally 
Let's do f of 1. Let me grab that so you can still see the function there. So f of 1 is 2 plus 3 minus 12, which is negative 7. So our relative min is negative 7. You can see how this is going to help us when we're trying to graph these functions. It's going to be very useful to know where the graph dips down and where it peaks.